Hey everybody, it's Al with CADCAMWizard.com and today we're going to go through some workflow for some undercutting, uh, how to isolate surfaces so you can just look at uh, what you're working with, uh, creating wireframe from your surfaces so you can uh, measure and edit better, uh, customizing uh, uh, tea cutters when uh, you don't seem to have a form tool and more. So let's go ahead and, and get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just copy this, this model. So I'll just select it and copy. And then I'm just going to paste it into a new file. All right. So this part here is relatively simple. Uh, there's a couple of ports, some pockets, profiles, but we have some undercuts and uh, sometimes those can be problematic because you really need to control where you're coming in and out of. So for me, I like to isolate geometry. So I'm only looking at uh, what I'm working with. So I'll create a new layer and make it active. This will allow me to isolate the geometry I'm working with. Now, one of the tools I can use here as well is under 3D and copy face. Uh, this will allow me to select surfaces that I want to isolate and work with them independently of the rest of the model. This is a great feature because you don't have to uh, unstitch your original model in order to get these surfaces. So I'll just select what I want to work with. I'm going to say OK, and then I'll get a copy of those surfaces on their own layer, and now I can work with them directly. Okay, so something I highly recommend doing is isolation and using layers. The next thing I want to do is I want to create wireframe from this geometry. Why do I want to do that? Uh, creating wireframe, uh, you get more snap points and things like that. So it can be very useful. I'm going to just pick the top and bottom here. And then I'm also going to pick uh, this uh, uh, through hole as well. And we'll choose OK. So now we have that geometry isolated. So those tools right there of copying a face using layers and working with wireframe or how to get wireframe from the solid is, is very helpful. All right, so the next thing we wanna do, I'm just gonna set up a job here uh, so I can get a get some tool path going. So the zero position, I'm not, I'm not too concerned with that at the moment. I'm just gonna put it on top center. Uh, it could be wherever you need it. All right, so let's go ahead and hide the stock. Uh, let's turn off the rest of our layers here. Now, you know, we have an undercut, so we can't reach it from above. We need to come in with a T cutter and, you know, clean up this, uh, this groove that we have here. So we need to make sure the tool starts in the center and exits in the center. So how is that accomplished? Well, the first thing we're going to look at is profiling. So we're going to load a two axis machining feature. We're going to select the geometry we want to drive to. We're going to pick the depth that we want to go. Uh, you know, maybe we'll adjust our lead in position and direction of cut. And that kind of gets us set up here. All right. Under our machining strategies, I'm just going to look at a profile rough at the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, really just compute it. Right. So if we compute this with the settings as is, we can see the tool is going to come in on the side of the wall and then it's going to run around and then it's going to come back out. And because we're dealing with an undercut, you know, we're going to be running into the part the whole time. So how can we avoid that? Well, what we can do is edit our lead types. The lead controls how you get in and out. Uh, we have a nice uh, point option here, lead from center. So this will ensure the tool leads in and leads out from center uh, and we'll go ahead and compute. So now we can see how the tool will start in the center, plunge down into the material, work over into the wall, uh, run around, come back out uh, and everything is, is looking good. So that's, uh, so that's one thing that we would want to utilize if we're trying to do a profile here is use that lead from center. Now, if we go into our tool types here under our tool and then we go to our tool crib, uh, this is going to give us all the different tool types we can use. Now, with profiling, you have access to all the tool types. So we can come in here under a T cutter and utilize that one. Um, in this example, I've actually already set up a cutter here. 
Uh, so I created a form cutter. And the reason why I did that was, uh, number one, to kind of represent the shanked uh, profile a little better. Um, and number two, not all the machining strategies offer T cutters. So sometimes you got to uh, be a little creative. So for the profile routine, we can support a T cutter, but really we don't want the tool to just come down and come around and come back out. We, we want it to spiral into the wall. That's the request from the customer. Uh, and profile doesn't offer that. Uh, profile will give you a side roughing routine. So we could leave some material here and say, we're gonna take multiple passes. And this will have the tool walk into the wall all right, so that's uh, definitely not the worst scenario here, but this step over here is a, a full width of cut. So it's kind of aggressive and we would rather have it gradually come into the cut. Now, if you're utilizing side roughing and you're getting a clearance issue or something like that, uh, you can always check your parameters and, and make sure that it's saying keep tool down. Uh, which if you're doing multiple steps, you'll see minimize retract and this will keep the tool down. If you don't have that on and you're trying to step it down, if the tool's going to clearance, you can utilize that, all right? So this is a little bit of side roughing and walking in, but it's not exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and look at the next routine. Uh, this time we're gonna do a pocket. So we'll do mill to axis. Uh, we're gonna select the same geometry, right? We're gonna use the same depth, okay? All of that looks good. Uh, we're going to come in here under pocketing. All right. We're going to do, we're going to use the same uh, cutter. You'll see when we go into pocketing, we don't have access to all the other form cutters. So we're going to just use, or I'm sorry, all the other cutting um, types or cutter types. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I created a form cutter here. So it can use the same tool and see it represented for both profiling and pocketing. Uh, under the pattern routine, we're going to use a spiral pocket. I'm just going to step this down a bit and we'll go ahead and compute. All right. So this is giving us our spiral routine, but you can see if we look at it from above, the tool maybe isn't really starting from center and uh, it's also exiting out on the side. So that's definitely going to cause an issue for us. We want the tool to come down in the center we want it to work its way out, and then we want it to come back to the center to come back out. And uh, well, there isn't really an option for that in here. So a couple of things we need to do. One, I want to put a point location, you know, on center. Uh, let me do that again. Control Z. So we're going to do point. I'm just going to click on or hover over this arc here, and then I'll be able to pick the point in the center, and we'll say OK. All right, so what that will do is force the tool to start in the center when we select it, okay? Under the pocket operation, you'll see a drill tip position. Uh, you can use this to tell the tool where to start in the pocket. Uh, the caveat is you need to make sure that the, the point is located in Z, so where we, where we would have uh, pre-drilled in Z. So we're gonna just go ahead and uh, select this point location. We'll choose okay. Then we're going to compute and now we can see the tool will start in the center and then work its way out. Now, the other thing we have here is how do we get this retrack from where it is uh, back to center? So there's a, a function in the software called the toolpath editor, and this is a great tool you can use to modify your toolpath directly. Uh, sometimes there's just not the options that you want. And that's where the toolpath editor allows you to graphically edit your toolpath versus having to edit in the code later, okay? So we wanna move this. Now, how can you edit the, the toolpath? You just right click on the operation and then you go down to edit toolpath. This will bring up the toolpath editor. There's a number of different features within the toolpath editor. Uh, the one that we're gonna use is gonna be move, okay? Move's gonna allow us to select part of the toolpath and then use either an incremental end position or even just the ability to drag uh, the location from one place to another. All right, so uh, these options are pretty good. Uh, once you get it set up, you'll see that it moves back, okay? So now we have it coming down in the center. 
We have it going out to the outside. We have it coming back as a rapid. So we want to change that. And then we have it uh, going back up to clearance. So a couple of things that I don't really like the drag method. We, we don't have a whole lot of clearance here. So we really want to make sure we're dead on. Okay. If after we've edited the toolpath, you'll see that it's locked. Uh, once you lock it, you won't be able to make any changes. So really, before you edit your toolpath, it should be the last step that you're doing. All your other parameters should be set. All right. Now, after it's locked, if we want to change it, you know, we can just uh, unlock it. Uh, I'm going to recompute it and it will go back to the default. All right. What I want to do at this point is I want to grab the geometry for this location so I can get an exact point and do a point to point position for the move. Uh, you could also do the math and incre incrementally edit it. I'm more of a graphics guy, so I like to work with geometry that's on the screen, make that right, and then use it as a reference. So how do we convert this toolpath, which is you can't select it into geometry? Well, again, that's another function of the toolpath editor. So we're going to come in here. We're going to choose edit toolpath. All right. We're going to select what it is that we want to work with. And then we'll use this one right here, which is convert to geometry. All right. So what that will do at this point is it will take that toolpath and turn it into a line or an arc that you can work with. Okay. So from here, I can do my point and I can do point end. I can grab this end position. So now I know I can go from a point to point position to get it to move out. All right. Let's go back into the cam tree. Let's go ahead and edit this. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and edit the tool path. Okay. From here, we're going to go back and select this item again. We're going to do a move. We're going to say pick from pick from a position. So we're going to choose pick and we'll grab that position. We'll say, okay. Then we're going to do pick. We're going to grab this position here and then we'll choose. Okay. So now you can see we had it move over. Um, we're, we're actually okay with that. So we're going to execute and we'll see that it moves. But the next thing we want to do is we want to change this from a rapid uh, into a feed move. So we're going to go to modify attributes. We'll click on uh, this line. I'm sorry, this entity here, this rapid position. We'll select it. We're going to change it from a rapid uh, just to the cutting feed. And then we're going to choose apply. And then OK. And now you can see how the toolpath is going to start in the center. It's going to spiral its way out and then it's going to come back to center with a feed move and then come out the hole. All right. So just a, a quick little video to kind of go through some of this stuff. Uh, the other thing we may want to talk about is really the form cutter. How did, how did we create the form cutter? So, you know, if we look at our tool profile, the tool profile is going to look like this. We've drawn in I've just hatched down here uh, the cutting flutes. So we've drawn it in on center. And then what we're going to need for the, the form is really just half of it. Uh, and the dotted line is going to represent the non-cutting area. Okay, so we can take this geometry or geometry like this and create a form cutter. Uh, you can do it just by creating new file. You can select the geometry that you have set up. I'm just going to move this over to the new file. Uh, okay, from here we can go to the CAM tab. We can go to the tool library. Within the tool library, we can go to the mill category and then we can just add a new tool. From there, you go over to here. This is what describes the tool. Uh, we're going to just go down to assign tool geometry. And then we're going to select our profile. Now, when I copied it over, I lost my attributes. So let me just click OK on this real quick. And I'm just going to window pick these areas. And I'm going to turn that into a dotted line by right clicking, modify line style dotted. OK, uh, the top of it and the center line we don't actually need. It's just the, the profile of the part or, or of the tool. So we'll come back over to here. Again, we're going to do mill. We're going to create a new tool. We'll go to the tool parameters. 
I'm just going to scroll down to where it says assign tool geometry. Uh, from here, I'm going to chain select this profile and we'll say OK. And then we'll see how that tool comes up in our preview. So that's the methodology for creating a form tool. Uh, again, if we're over to here, using the toolpath editor, we're able to edit and configure the toolpath the way that we want. Now, the last thing is we have a, a bottom cut here. The, the width of the tool isn't the width of the slot, so we need to take multiple passes. Uh, the way that I accomplish this is using the toolpath pattern. Uh, so we can come in here and we're going to modify this. So let me see. We're going to go here. Uh, toolpath pattern. We're going to do a translate. Okay. By using the translate, we can say number of copies and then we can say how much we need it to go up. I don't recall the distance off the top of my head, so I'm just going to make it a small number and we'll say okay. All right. So now we can get two passes to cut, both going to center. Uh, again, this dotted line here, that was just geometry we created to aid in this. So now we'll see the tool will come down to the center. It's going to go to the bottom, work its way out, and then it's going to come up and do the next section. So just a, a quick little video for you guys. I hope you find it helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, just reply in the comments section or whatever uh, group uh, this video may be hosted on. Other than that, I hope you're having an amazing day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.